Supreme Court justices are paid well, but nowhere near as much as a top flight corporate lawyer. In fact, Thomas himself said in a 2001 speech to the Savannah Bar Association that it is not a job that you do for money. The job is not worth doing for what they pay. It's not worth doing for the grief, but it is worth doing for the principle. Now, Justice Thomas is probably the most right-wing member of the Supreme Court in living memory. He's fully committed to remaking the country and its jurisprudence in his conservative vision. But the other thing you need to know about Clarence Thomas, and there's a lot about him, is that he's always wanted to be rich. We already know that Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas has been bought by billionaires, one in particular, but apparently we didn't know the full extent of it until now. New reporting from ProPublica shows us exactly how extensive these gifts from Thomas's sugar daddies really were. And just to give you an idea very quickly of how crazy these perks were, we already know that they used to send him around the world on private planes, but one time they sent him an entire Boeing 737. ProPublica has identified at least 38 destination vacations, 26 private jet flights, eight helicopter flights, and a dozen VIP passes to sporting events that Justice Thomas and his wife received as gifts from wealthy friends who happen to have similar ideological perspectives as the justice. And this has been going on for decades. Clarence Thomas makes around $300,000 a year on his salary, which is a very nice salary that most people would be more than happy with. But the lifestyle he leads is way outside of his tax bracket. The job is not worth doing for what they pay. So apart from the private planes, he's also received skybox tickets to sporting events, access to private golf clubs in Florida, and luxury trips and hotel stays around the world. And those trips wouldn't always make it onto his financial disclosure forms. The Supreme Court effectively polices itself on disclosure for stuff like this, and ProPublica is upfront about the fact that not all of the hospitality they report on here may have required disclosure all of the wealthy benefactors involved essentially say that this hospitality shouldn't be judged so harshly because they are Thomas's friends. Now, we all remember the revelation that Thomas had a close relationship with billionaire Harlan Crow, the guy who, among other things, paid nearly $100,000 for Thomas's grandnephew to attend a private school for two years. That on its own was a pretty big bombshell considering Crow's mega donor status with the GOP. But now three other billionaire daddies have been revealed, all of whom are also GOP mega donors. Neither Thomas nor his benefactors could be reached for comment except for one, David Sokol, the former heir apparent of Berkshire Hathaway, who said in a statement, quote, we have never once discussed any pending court matters. Our conversations have always revolved around helping young people, sports, and family matters. He went on to say that the private flights were merely a reasonable security precaution for the Supreme Court justice. Now, apart from the presumed bribery that's going on here, the bigger problem for Thomas is the matter of financial disclosure. Both judges and Congress people are required to report gifts from donors, but Thomas hasn't been doing that. He says that these men are just friends who want to do something nice for him, their friend, who just so happens to be a Supreme Court justice, who happens to make rulings that work in these billionaires' favor. And these gifts are bigger and more extravagant and more regular than anything ever seen before, not for judges in the lower courts, not even for other Supreme Court justices. It's truly unprecedented. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court is a self-governing body. They don't have a clear code of ethics because they're supposed to be the most judicial in all the land. They shouldn't need a code of ethics. But what should happen and what should be the case is often very different from reality. And we can't always govern based on a should. He should be better. He should be more ethical, but we have seen that he just is not. And this is tricky, specifically because of the nature of the Supreme Court and its magnificent role in our country and government and constitution. It's the head of its own branch of government. So what probably needs to happen now going forward is that Congress works with the judicial branch to codify laws and ethical standards regarding Supreme Court justices. And there needs to be a mechanism put in place regarding accountability for breaking that code. As we approach another election Year, the Democrats especially need to be talking about this more, and then once they're done talking about it, they need to actually do something about it. Americans love to think that our country is above the petty bribery and corruption that we so often criticize other nations' governments for allowing and perpetuating. We are the most democratic
democratic nation in the world. Corruption can't touch us. Our constitution wouldn't allow it. Our elected and appointed government officials wouldn't allow it. Our system of checks and balances is brilliant and perfect and impenetrable. Our democracy is foolproof. Right? But as long as government is run by human beings, these issues will always be a problem. And the bigger the country, the richer the economy, the more influential the country is politically and globally, the deeper the bribery and corruption often goes. They're just better at hiding it. All right, that's it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow me on all the socials. Thanks.